Hello, I'm Cassie and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Wald, who has been nicknamed the Blood Detective, for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and find natural solutions. Dr. Wald has several degrees and certifications, including board certifications in nutrition. And Dr. Wald, we have some questions that people mm -hmm. have been emailing through to us on um, today's topic of thyroid. Okay. So Mary's been suffering from a level of fatigue that interferes with her fa family life as being a mom. Mm -hmm. She says, I want to do things with my, with my kids. I want to be able to go shopping to the movies, taking a walk, but I just can't do them for very long. Yeah. My doctors have tried to help me. All my blood work comes back normal. They agree that my issue is not depression. What else could it be? And what can I do to help with my levels of fatigue? Yeah. Well, Cass, I think Mary's thyroid might be an issue here. So. Uh, Mary, I don't know you, uh, but based on these symptoms, we have to think about thyroid. So since it sounds pretty clear to me that that's uh, a very high probability, let's just assume that right now and let's discuss what to do for thyroid. So Mary, if you saw your physician, uh, your doctor would order some blood work and they would check your thyroid, what are called indices. Those are your different thyroid tests. And they'd also check an anterior pituitary hormone called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. And the definition of uh, low thyroid would mean, or hypothyroid, that we have have an imbalance, a low level of the thyroid hormones, and a high level of the TSH. So if you, in fact, do have hypothyroid that's, in, that's causing you to uh, just not have energy and do the things that you need to do as a mom, so uh, I mean, these are very, very significant quality of life issues, sometimes just taking thyroid medication can be all that's needed. So if that's something you're open to, uh, and you don't mind doing things with a the medication, then there are a variety of different forms of, of thyroid hormone. There's also natural thyroid hormone, and those are the sorts of things you get from natural practitioners, you know, like our office, you know. Okay. Uh, the traditional endocrinologist or internist or family doctor would give uh, synthetic forms of thyroid hormone, and not everyone wants to put those in, in their bodies. Uh, now, having said that, even though someone might correct their low thyroid problem with thyroid medications, that doesn't mean that they'll feel better so sometimes you'll take your thyroid hormone and you'll wonder why you still have all these symptoms of low thyroid like fatigue and uh, inability to you know just get through your day and exercise effectively you might be a little depressed for example so um, that's because just normalizing blood work is just not enough cells have to be receptive to thyroid hormone this is why we like to do things with nutrition as well so let's segue over to how we would manage our presumed uh, low thyroid with Mary. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, sometimes there's there's different types of low thyroid. So the thyroid can be interrupted by an infection such as a virus. And uh, in that case, uh, again, the treatment is basically what I just said medically. I'll just review a few of the, the types of low thyroid uh, right now and then, because the, the treatments vary a bit. Uh, so the second one we mentioned in an, another one of the interviews, which is Hashimoto's, Hypothyroid, which is an autoimmune thyroid disease, that's also treated the very same way with the, the thyroid medications, uh, but this one's characterized by these circulating antibodies that literally block thyroid hormone. So once again, if this pen is thyroid hormone, it needs to get into a tissue, let's say like the brain to give someone wakefulness or the muscles to get energy. If this is uh, an antibody that's blocking the thyroid hormone, even though the levels of thyroid hormone may be fine, they're literally blocked to get into the tissue. So the, the labs look fine and the person's confused and they say to their doctor, you know, how come I still don't feel so great? And sometimes the doctors don't even give an explanation. They know to give thyroid hormone and then they hope for the best beyond that. There are no other treatments for hypothyroid in traditional medicine. But in natural medicine, there are several other things. So those are the two categories, first of all, of hypothyroid. There's maybe an infectious cause, hypothyroid, an autoimmune cause, hypothyroid, and sometimes we just don't know what the cause is. In traditional medicine, it's the medication. In natural medicine, it's looking at laboratory work and detailed visual nutritional exams and uh, also going through extensive questionnaires to try to tease out what nutrition the pers person might need for the thyroid to work better. So we mention a lot throughout all these interviews the importance of vitamin D. So vitamin D modifies the immune response, lowers it, can reduce these circulating antibodies if this, if this is a, a form of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And then uh, also vitamin D is needed to take one thyroid hormone and turn it into an active thyroid hormone, which is what makes a person feel better, namely T4, which is one thyroid hormone, to its really active form of thyroid hormone, which is T3. We also need zinc, vitamin B2, and other nutrients for the conversion, because some people don't convert 
one form of thyroid hormone into another. And that conversion problem can be very nicely managed with natural types of approaches. And of course, including the diet, uh, there are compounds in certain um, vegetables known as goitrogens that you'll find in broccoli, uh, cabbage, and cauliflower, for example. And there are other uh, foods that can have these goitrogens. They can interfere with the thyroid function as well. Sometimes just eliminating those then there are toxic effects, too, that might cause the thyroid to be slow. For example, fluoride might actually interfere with thyroid. So we've had patients that have just eliminated the fluoride medication, and, or thyroid uh, toothpaste, that is, the fluoride toothpaste, and to our surprise, even, they say, yeah, my thyroid's 80% better. And then they clean up, we clean up their diets a little bit by removing the refined and processed carbohydrates, we want to increase all sorts of fruits and vegetables in the diet, with the exception of the goitrogen-containing um, vegetables. And, uh, but not everyone's affected with those, but these are the things we want to go through to really see. And then again, really important through our sort of blood detective technologies, that is uh, looking at the laboratory work of an individual and fixing whatever it is we find, because whatever we find is what a person needs to correct their various needs, which include the thyroid. So we can read a book on what nutrients or foods we need to help the thyroid, but those things may not work for everyone. That's why we need to individualize things. So I suppose, um, that we have to sort of end that conversation there because depending on the cause of the thyroid, the treatments are very, very, very both naturally and also through traditional medicine. And again, on our website at uh, www.intmedny.com, we have lots of articles and information about how to treat the thyroid and uh, naturally. Okay, and just back to the blood work because Mary says that mm. her blood work came back ah, fine. Okay. What is the difference between the blood work that a regular doctor would do mm -hmm. in the blood work that you do through the blood detective program. Okay, so uh, I, I'm glad you brought that up, Cassie, because, uh, you know, Mary, you might have been told, again, your thyroid it looks good, the rest of your blood work looks good, but your thyroid hormone, just sticking to that for a second, may not be placed in the optimal area on the ranges. You know, when you get blood tests, there's a, a range of normalcy for thyroid hormones and cholesterol and blood sugar and all those different things. Sure. But that doesn't mean that they're optimally placed. The person might feel a lot better when their TSH is over here and not here. And the same thing for uh, any number of, of findings like blood sugar. So what makes um, the blood detective approach a bit different is, first of all, we know about optimal ranges. We're, we're trying to discover where in the laboratory ranges a person might feel better. So, for example, an endocrinologist or other doctor that's managing uh, Mary's thyroid, let's say, Mary, if you're given uh, thyroid medication, they might say, well, you know, your TSH is 2.75, which is considered right in the middle of the range, and you should be fine. And if for any reason, Mary, you're not, the doctor's going to be a bit uh, perturbed, usually, a little annoyed, and might say, oh, boy, this is, someone's got a psych history here, maybe there's depression here. They okay. really do not take these things very seriously if the labs don't show anything. But we found that a lot of people feel a lot better with a TSH of about 1.8. The point is, somewhere other than where your normal is may be where you need to be to feel better. So, so that's just with the thyroid. But the thyroid does not exist in a vacuum. There are lots of other biochemistries. So we use, in the blood detective format, a tighter range of normal, which looks for hidden problems. And the last thing I'll say about the blood detective approach is, Mary, that we might check many other types of influences on your thyroid that going to one doctor or another doctor, no matter how good they are in their respective specialties, they don't appreciate. For example, a, a person might have sluggish uh, or low testosterone as well, or low normal testosterone. Let's use that as an example. Low normal, that would be ignored by most physicians, but maybe that person needs to be midway or on the upper end of the normal range, and that kicks in metabolic rate, which means it influences the thyroid. So uh, we also might check for toxins or infections or other causes of thyroid that would not be found in the regular lab work uh, particularly the, the lab work, Mary, that you had. So the lab looks normal, but we have to ask ourselves, is it complete enough? And uh, my standards are much, much different, as you, as you mentioned, Cassie, to others. So we're creating sort of a metabolic map of each patient, Mary, where we're looking at all different sorts of areas. There are digestive influences upon the thyroid uh, or energy, so we want to look into that. And then we might want to look into, as I said, hormones and toxins and basic nutrition. That's like four or five different kinds of doctors. And, you know, they don't talk to one another. So here we do it at one time. And just doing that helps us figure out some things that would be considered, uh, they'd be missed until someone said that to have normal blood work. Oh, wonderful. So that's what there is to say about that for now. Thank you very much. Thanks.